Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture 9 of ComSol Multiphysics training course. Today we are going to discuss how to use deformed geometry and interpolation function for point clouds. So let's begin. So what are the objectives of today's lecture? First we are going to discuss how to extract a deformed geometry from one simulation and use it for another simulation. Also, we are going to discuss how to use the outputs of a simulation as the boundary condition of another simulation, in the case that the two physics cannot be combined. We are going to discuss function definitions, and finally, we are going to talk about interpolation function as a very important tool to insert point cloud data into console. Why this is important to cover these topics? We have the cases that we cannot directly combine the physics through the multi-physics feature or we don't want to do that. For example, when we want to do a study based on the results of a previous case that we are not going to continue on that. Also, sometimes we have results and outputs in point cloud form from other simulations, from other software or from the experiments. So in fact, it is important to know these topics when the two physics cannot be combined directly. For example, the piezoelectric interface and the electric current interface cannot be combined directly and easily. The example for today is a simple case where we have a piezoelectric film under compression and bending force and we are going to see how we can extract its deformed geometry for other studies and how to find the output of the system on the boundary and use it as the boundary condition for another case using point cloud data. So let's begin. So as usual, we start with the model wizard and we have a 2D case. And like I said, it is a very simple example and it's going to be a hypothetical case. We just want to get the point of using deformed geometry and interpolation. So we are going to use the piezoelectricity as the physics which I used before so it is in my recently used physics. Then we are going to add the study which is for simplicity we are going to use the stationary study here. And that's it. Let's get into the software and start the simulation. Now we have to make the geometry so I'm gonna make a simple rectangle and the dimension is 0.1 meter for the width and 0.01 meter for the height. Now build selected. We are good with that. And then build all. And for the material, we just go to the add materials from library. And then we go to the piezoelectric and add PVDF. I don't want to focus on these sections because I'm sure that you are familiar with these types of simulations and definitions because we did that in our previous lectures, right? So we are good. We have defined the material. Okay, in the solid mechanics, we just need to define the boundary condition. So we have a fixed constraint on the left hand side and we have load on the other side. So we use boundary load and then we select this boundary. And I know I need to use 3 in 5 at x direction. It's going to be compressive and minus 3 e5 in the y direction in the negative side okay that's it then we are in the electrostatics we don't need to do something special we just go to ground and we select one side as ground that's it we are all set we can have mesh and we're going to use finer build all so we are done with mesh we go to study and in the study make sure you click on include geometric nonlinearity. This is important if you want to extract the deformed geometry. Then we click on compute and wait for solving. Okay, the problem is solved. We have the stress results and as expected, the max stress is at the location that the beam is clamped and we have the potential. The electric potential, as you see, we have max potential on top and bottom and it is because we have max stress on top and bottom, right? So we are all set with the solution. Okay, now the problem is solved and we have a deformed geometry and we want to use it for other purposes. 
This case is not only for this problem. So imagine you have a geometry or a structure that is deformed by a fluid flow or with another force and you want to see how to use the deformed geometry for other purposes or other studies. Same thing can be applied in there. So let's see how we can get this deformed geometry out for other purposes. The easiest way is to go to export, right click and then click on mesh. Why mesh? Because mesh is an importable format into console. So if we do so, then to go to browse and select the location, I'm going to put the name of, for example, deform mesh and then save. Now we can click on export and the deformed mesh is already exported. I will use it later on and then you will see. Okay, the other purpose of this study is to see how we can use the output of a system as the boundary condition of another simulation which is not related to this simulation or how to use the point cloud as the input for other study. Let's make a point cloud of results. The point cloud is basically the electric potential on the boundaries of this piezoelectric structure. Like I said, it could be from an experiment or so, but here we need a point cloud to use it in the future. So let me just go to the data set and right click and then we have the edge 2D. Then I'm going to select all boundaries and then we have defined edge 2D1. We can use another name for that. Then I go to the export, I right click data and then here I go to edge 2D. What I need to export? The output voltage, electric, electric potential, and then I go down. I'm gonna export it as a text file, an address for it. So I'm gonna say V on the boundary and we save it. It's a spreadsheet. We don't touch the other options and here we go to none for the smoothing and the resolution it is important to make it finer because we want to have more points on the boundaries and the results on the boundaries with more details right so everything is set you can click on export and we have exported that i'm gonna open it up and see how it looks like so as you see i have opened the file and this is actually the results of potential on the boundaries of our system. We defined it as a text file and it is actually a point cloud, which means we have number of points and a voltage which is dedicated to each point. So for example, we have the X and Y coordinate of the point and the voltage at that point. This is a point cloud data and we can use it in the future. Like I said, this point cloud data could be from an experiment or other simulation or even other software. The main point is how to use that in the future. Okay, I'm going to close it and go back to our original model. Now we are all set with this model. But before, I just want to give you one more information. If I plot the electric potential on the boundaries, so if I, for example, like edge 2d and then line graph and in here I select electric potential and I plot so the electric potential on the boundary look like something like this it is zero on the clamped edge because it was grounded and on the top it goes to a large value and then goes to up zero and then we have the other edge and then we have the down boundaries right we can also plot it one by one so instead of this if i go to solution one and then line graph one in here i select the top boundary 
and then I plot, I get this graph as the electric potential. So just keep it in mind, I want to show you how we get the same thing in other problems from the interpolation and importing the data over there. Okay, so now we are done with this study and I'm going to start a new simulation in another physics which has nothing to do with the piezoelectric one. Okay, let's do it. So if I go to file, new, model wizard, a 2D, and I can select, for example, electric current here, which cannot be joined with piezoelectricity, then add and study. And I'm gonna have a stationary model, doesn't matter. So it says if we want to save it, yes. So I'm gonna save it at study one, save, and then I continue. Like I said, this is just one example that you can use as a sample of combining two unrelated studies and the result of one to the other one. Okay, so in the geometry, we just right click on geometry and then we click on import and then we go to mesh and as you may remember, we saved our deformed geometry as a mesh and it is importable here. Interesting, right? Then we click on browse. So we have the deformed mesh open and then import. And there we go. We have our deformed geometry, exactly what we had before. This is very interesting because you can use that for many other studies, right? So imagine you have a case that your structure is deformed by another force and then you can find the deformation and then use your deformed geometry for other studies. I hope you got the idea, so I'm not going to repeat it again. As I want to make a new study, which is not related to my previous case, I'm going to add something more into the geometry. For example, I'm going to add a rectangle here. It's actually air surrounding our deformed geometry. So let's say the width is 0.2 and the height is 0.06 and the position in x direction is minus 0.05 and in y direction we can say minus 0.03 let's build and see there you go we have an air domain surrounding our deformed geometry so form union build all in the material we can have build in air add to component and we have the piezoelectric we can add it here so i add it here and that's it can close the material air goes to the surrounding domain and PVDF to our deformed geometry and as you see the electrical conductivity is not defined because and we have to define it because we are in the electric current so I'm gonna use a very small number because it is a dielectric so for the air it's better to have also a very small number to avoid any errors so I know that the conductivity is zero but we can use a very small number to not get errors and that's it so in the electric current we want to apply the results of the previous study as the boundary condition of the new one so how can we do that we take the advantage of a new function so if we go to definition and right click we can define a function we have other options like step function, we can use sine function, a ramp function, but here, because we have point cloud, we have to use interpolation. We go to interpolation and then file and browse. And this is the function or the point cloud that we exported before. Like I said, it could be from other places, but it should match your system, right? So we 
import it here and make sure you use spatial coordinates and select material because it matches the material right and then we have two arguments we can use a name for example i can say v1 and then import and there we go it is imported we can plot it because the voltage is gonna be the function of two coordinates it doesn't make meaningful shape something like that you cannot imagine it very well in here so don't worry about that we're gonna use it later so we go to electric current we right click and then we are going to have a ground for example somewhere around air boundaries this is just something I select randomly and now how to apply the boundary condition we use terminal and then I select the boundaries I have right and then I go to voltage and here I use the function I interpolated this is very important and as you know the voltage and the terminal here is a scalar parameter sometimes we have a vector so in the interpolation we have more arguments for x y and z direction and when we define that as a boundary here we can select in which direction we apply that for example the force in x y and z if we import it as an interpolation so here i use little v so i need to use little v here and that's it we are all set right so we go to mesh build all i'm gonna make it smaller and even smaller maybe extra fine and that's it now we can have this study with so stationary and compute so let's see what we get here okay our problem is solved and in order to ensure that we properly imported the boundary condition let's plot the voltage on the boundaries so i'm going to click on results 1d plot group and then right click line graph and then select for example this boundary and we're going to plot the voltage but there you go you remember this graph from before and if i click all boundaries then i remove the air boundaries and then click on plot i get this i hope you can remember that from our previous studies so we correctly imported the results as the boundary conditions for the new case and we made a new study based on that this is very interesting we will not be able to combine electric current and piezoelectricity directly in one model because the multiphysics were not defined for that but in that case we could somehow do that we got the deformation from the previous study and then we applied the boundary conditions and we studied the system in a new physics right this method can be expanded for other simulations and physics so it is just a hypothetical case so i hope you got the idea of using the form geometry and how to use the interpolation to import point clouds and apply them into your boundary conditions thank you and stay tuned for the next videos